Today, I'm going to be showing you guys five players in fantasy football that can make or break the season. Some of them I'm in on, some of them are out on, but we need to talk about all five. They are very important to 2024. The first one is a guy that I came in today thinking I would be avoiding, but after all the research I did, I'm in on Isaiah Pacheco. He's currently going at pick 46 on underdog, 37 on sleeper, and all the way up at 16 on ESPN. Now, I'm going to do a disclaimer right now. I am not drafting him in the second round. 16 is way too high. ESPN has the worst rankings, notoriously. Do not listen to that. Now, on to why I like him. He averaged over 15.3 points per game in 2023, which after the research kind of seems like that's his low outcome for this season. Up until week 12, he didn't even play 70% of snaps in a single game. But once Jarek McKinnon went down and he showed that he can actually pass catch, he went over 70% in his next seven out of eight games, including the playoffs. Over that time, he was averaging 3.9 catches per game. And when you add the yards to that, that's basically an extra touchdown in terms of fantasy football points per game. Now McKinnon is gone and the offense added Xavier Worthy and Hollywood Brown, who are really going to stretch the defense out and open up running lanes for Pacheco. Last year, this offense was a show of themselves, passing the ball barely downfield, an average depth of target of 6.5 yards that was 33rd in the league. For context, Mahomes used to throw 8 to 9 in earlier years of his career. These lighter boxes are going to allow Pacheco to be much more efficient and break off bigger runs. And last year, he only saw 9 goal line carries. That's pretty much nothing for him. I can't really see that getting any lower. So I would have to say there's probably some positive touchdown regression for this season. On top of this, Vegas has this offense scoring 27.5 points per game last year they had them scoring 21 and a half points per game an extra touchdown per game is insane and you have to imagine some of those will go to Pacheco so in the third to fourth round I'm definitely in the second player is George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers currently going at pick 40 and underdog 56 on sleeper and all the way down at 58 on ESPN the bull case is that he actually developed a connection with Mason Rudolph a guy who's willing to chuck the ball down the fields and they had a lot of success at the end of last year now they're saying Russell Wilson who we know in all of his years in Seattle he's bad at passing over the middle of the field but he's great down the sidelines and throwing the deep ball now the bad case for George Pickens is his route running. His route running metrics by every standpoint were horrible last year. All he does is run straight down the field. That's why he led the league in yards perception last year. But I'm going to chalk a lot of this up to him being lazy and with Kenny Pickett not expecting to even get hit with the deep ball. So he wasn't really trying as hard as he should be because we did see at the end of the season with no Deontay Johnson and he had Mason Rudolph that he was really giving it his all and he had a 200 yard game. We're also getting reports from camp that no other Steelers wide receiver is even decent at camp. So I mean, he could see 140 plus targets, but generally for a receiver to see that much volume, you have to be getting easier targets that are schemed up for you. And he's just such a bad route runner over the middle of the field. I don't see it happening, but if he does improve upon all that, he could have a massive year, but at this current ADP, I'm out. But if you think he takes the leap, feel free to draft him. Number three, a guy who has to take an even bigger leap, Drake London, to justify this insane second round price tag. He's going at pick 13 to 16 on all the sites. We've seen wide receivers like Jefferson, Diggs, Adam Thielen, all thrive with Kirk Cousins, but is it crazy to say that Drake London is much worse than all those guys? I'm really concerned about what type of upside he has. His route running metrics for the previous two years were not great, and they definitely were worse his second year compared to his rookie year. He was ranked 74th in open score by ESPN. His route win rate percentage was 87th on player profiler, and his average yards of separation was 80th. He's averaged a little over 10 points per game in his first two seasons in fantasy, and he's really got to get to 17 or 18 to justify this insane price tag. That is a huge leap. And while the offensive system is completely changed, they should be throwing more. I don't see why you still wouldn't use Bijan Robinson a ton and Kyle Pitts now that he's more healthy. The way I see this going, it's going to be a lot more like Olave where it's like 14 and a half points per game and he doesn't quite pay off that insane draft capital. Fourth on the list is Debo Samuel. I was in shock to realize that he's at pick 46 on ESPN, 31 on sleeper, when I'm happy to draft him at pick 19 on underdog fantasy. We just talked about how London needs to take that leap to 17 to 18 points per game. What if I told you Debo is already at that, especially last year? If you look at the raw numbers, he averaged 16.3 points per game, but when you remove the three games that he left early or barely played in, he averaged 18.5 points per game. We think of him as a massive boomer bust player, but the way he's used is so consistent, especially around the goal line. He had 12 total touchdowns this past year, which was ranked fourth among wide receivers. This is pretty much going to be top five every year. And his average depth of target is only 6.6 yards downfield. For most wide receivers, this would be scary because they have to do so much on their own, but as the best yak receiver in the NFL, besides maybe Tyree Kill, he's going to get things done. His average yard perception was 14 14.9. He averaged eight yards after the catch. We also have the added benefit that Brandon Ayuk is struggling to get a second contract with the 49ers. Maybe he gets that done. Even if he gets that done, I'm completely in on Debo Samuel, but especially if that doesn't get done. Now, before the fifth and final player, make sure you're drafting all these players on Underdog Fantasy. It's a great way to win $1.5 million because that's the top prize on Best Ball Mania. It's $15 million in total. And when you join with code DNR, they'll give you up to 250 bucks to play with. So have fun with that. I've already drafted over 50 paid leagues it is so fun. I'm winning that 1.5 mil. Finally, we get to our fifth
fifth player, Scary Terry McLaurin. He has an ADP of 74 in ESPN, 68 in Sleeper, and all the way up to 48 on Underdog Fantasy. We know what Terry McLaurin is. He's a great deep ball receiver that's constantly stuck in a terrible situation and does not do much in fantasy. He has now had three years in a row of under 13 and a half points per game, and I don't see it getting any better. Are we forgetting how pass heavy and how much opportunity he had last year with Sam Howell? Say what you want about how talented Howell is, but when they're throwing the ball at such an insane rate like they were last year, Terry has got to produce. He ran the second most routes in the entire league and still couldn't get to 13 points per game. Now, Jaden Daniels comes in, and while he may be a better passer of the football, he's going to run the ball a lot more, and they're going to play at a slower pace. He will not be throwing many games of 50-plus attempts like Howell was. And potentially the biggest problem of all is how bad that commander's O-line is. There is no time for Jaden Daniels to sit in the pocket and launch one deep to Terry McLaurin. And as a wide receiver who mainly only runs deep field routes, it's going to be very tough for him to actually have time to get open. At pick 74 and 68, I'm okay with it. I don't love it, but at pick 48 and underdog, I'm completely staying away. I appreciate all the support you guys are giving me. Drop a follow, drop a comment of what you guys want to see next. Let's try to get to 100 likes on this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.